An Indiana county at the heart of an HIV outbreak has seen a significant increase in the number of cases more than two weeks into a short-term needle exchange program. There are now 120 HIV cases and 10 preliminary positive cases tied to Scott County, and this is up from 106 from the previous week, Madison. The situation is, is a crisis that is going on in this state. The health officials are saying that we most likely will see an increase on, on cases coming up because they're starting to get more people tested. The problem here that we are seeing is the governor, around March 26, he did an exemption to the law of anti-paraphernalia law that in Indiana, if you have a needle with you and you get arrested, you go to jail. It's a felony, they will give you a bail of $1,500 and you'll spend the night in, in jail. This is creating an environment for the addicts that are sharing needles to be in need of needles. Yeah, I mean, with an epidemic outbreak, we have to have the governor and the law enforcers. They have to communicate and agree that they need to solve this. Uh, this is actually, this is, I mean, yes, illegal drugs, either way, people are going to do them. But with this on the rise and where the numbers are quadrupling, we have to, they have to come together to solve this problem because this is more serious than even people just taking drugs and having the deaths if, if they're taking illegal drugs when there is an outbreak and it's, this is actually needs more attention. And it's exactly what is going on. Uh, the governor, following recommendations from the federal authorities, decided to do this 30-day program of needle exchange, but the problem is that the local police is not following the lead. They are still confiscating, they're still arresting addicts with needles in their possession, even the state provided needles. So what is going on, and I have a quote from Kevin Polly. Kevin Polly is unfortunately one of the persons affected by this outbreak, and he said, most of the people are afraid to go over to the testing or the exchange. It's supposed to be confidential, and I don't believe it's confidential. The ones that are afraid to go to jail are going to use dirty syringes, they are going to continue to share, and the HIV is going to continue to be in Scott County on a very high basis, so high, Madison, that this is considered to be 20 times the normal rate in just these two months of a whole year. Right. So they normally get in between five to 10 cases a year. Now they're literally hitting 100, 120. They are expecting to get at least 50, 60 more cases in the upcoming weeks. And they are still not using the only pro proof method of curving down these infections, that is needle exchange. Well, the war on drugs, I mean, we have to go back to people selling drugs is one thing, people doing drugs is another. But within, with this problem, with people not being able to have their own needle for their own health reasons, if they are going to expose themselves to drugs, I mean, this should not be, this should not be a choice. It should be not taken away. They should be able to have those provided. Whether they want to do that, again, that should be a choice of a human being. But the fact that they're now being subjected because there's no needle needles, and given that the local enforcers are taking them away and the state is taking them away, it's making them use dirty needles. And that becomes then, whose fault is it? It's not just about selling drugs now, it's another whole issue. And it's putting, it's actually taking responsibility now of the state of these lives, because they're not being able to access, uh, to be able to buy something that you could buy at your local pharmacy. So I don't think your rights should be taken away from actually buying a needle. No, it, and the thing is that they don't, need, they don't need to buy needles. They just go with their own needles, they exchange, they get this package mm -hmm. that we can see on the screen right now, and it's, a, it's safe for them to continue to use. That is the debate. The debate is, do we provide them with the items that they need to be using drugs, or do we not spend money on that because that will amount to promoting the use of drugs? The other side of the coin is, do we let people get infected, like uh, exponential rate, like it's happening right now? The other thing is that it follows a federal intention that is, since 1989, the federal government banned any type of mon money support for needle exchange programs. So that is the other element of this, of this program that Indiana faces, is that there is no grants at the federal level to support a needle exchange program and the education needed for it to be effective. 
But we want to know what do you think? Do you think that these needle exchange programs should be supported and renew after it expires after 30 days? Or this is not the right way to curve this HIV outbreak in Indiana? Let us know what you think in the comments. And if you haven't, please subscribe to the LibTV2.